Hey guys, Lee with LG Speed and Custom here, and in this video, we are doing some metal work on the front fenders for my 32 Ford. All right, we're at a top secret location where I've got all my fenders stored here. Here's four passenger side fenders I've got. And then I've got two driver's side fenders. This driver's side fender I got at a garage sale quite a few videos back, and it is pretty much perfect. It's ready to go. It's had a little bit of work done right here. There's a like a factory flaw with 32 Fords where the frame rail comes down. There's a little gap right there so that is being split and widened to fill that gap and yeah otherwise this fender is perfect just needs like a little once over with a sander and we can probably put some primer on it these fenders on the other hand not so much so these are the two that came with the car when i bought it and they are pretty tough shape really tough shape this one's probably the worst one. This one is not much better. They've definitely seen better days. I got this fender from my friend Bruce a while back and it's pretty much mint other than a little hole right here with a crack. The downside though is it's got this spare tire cut out which is you know, not super desirable and not something that I particularly want. And then we've got the fourth fender. This fender I bought at that garage sale as well. It is the match to that one. However, it's had some metal work done here that is not particularly the best. Welding on edges like that kind of never really works out. This piece was made too short. I don't know, it's, it's a lot of work to fix all that. So I had a couple ideas. My first plan was this fender. This area is pretty much perfect. Needs a little bit of hammer and dolly work there. That's no big deal to repair. So plan A was to cut this out. Just weld it in this fender. Easy peasy, done. However, that destroys basically a perfect fender. And that kind of bugged me a bit. So then I thought, well, maybe we'll I mean, this isn't terrible. You can fix that. Maybe just sacrifice one of these fenders. This one I think is even a little bit better. But that's still a lot of work. And that one is mint. It'd be so easy to just cut that out and put it in that one. So after thinking about it for a while and talking over with some friends, I've decided to stick with plan A and sacrifice this spare tire fender to fix that one. Cause it's at the end of the day, like Bruce said, use the best stuff that you have to make the best fenders for your car. And that is the best fender. So cut that out and put it in there, combine those two and have a perfect fender. And yes, it is sacrificing that fender. This fender will essentially be destroyed. However, I'm justifying it with, if I was to cut that out of this and this, or even just make a new piece from scratch and weld it in there, you know, that's probably, that's probably an eight hour job by the time I'm done, start to finish. So I'm gonna work eight hours to scavenge this stuff together to save a fender that's worth 200 bucks, if that. Nobody wants tires or spare tires on the side of their car. Well, some people do, but not very many. For every person that builds a fenderless hot rod, there's maybe one out of 20 that wants a spare tire on it. So it's, it's just not worth the time. So. I'm gonna load these up on the forklift, take them back to the shop. Well, I'll load these two up on the forklift, take them back to the shop, and we'll start cutting.
Both fenders are clamped down on the bench here. I had a brief moment of thinking, you know, maybe it is easier just to cut that out and weld it in there. But then I started going over this fender and it's actually not as mint as I expected. We got some damage down there. We've got a high spot here, bunch of damage in here. This obviously uh, dents in quite a few spots on it. So that fender is still the nicer fender. So just stick with the plan. So we do want this area, but there's some damage in here. We got the hole here. There's some weird stuff going on there. We've got some damage in here. So I wanna to try to take the minimum that we're gonna to need to not transfer damage stuff onto the good fender. So I've laid a sheet of plastic on here with a few magnets and I'm just gonna tr like trace the, the general shape of it as well as how far in this comes so that we can take this, transfer it onto that and then we'll know kind of exactly what we're gonna need. There's two bolt holes up here that I'll use as like a reference point for when I transfer this to the other side. All right, there's our general fender shape. And now I'm just gonna do like, just kind of a dotted line on here so that I know how far in we need to cut the other piece. Now we'll transfer our plastic from this fender to the other fender. Put our holes on our little reference points there. All right, so we're just gonna catch that little corner, but I think it'll be okay. I'm just gonna transfer our dots, or our dashed line onto the fender. And then we can take our plastic off and mark out where we're gonna cut it now that we know how far in we need to go. Boom. We can see exactly where we need to, like how far in we need to go. This line right here is represented with these dots. So a couple things we got to factor in here. This underside comes right up to these two bolt holes and is spot welded, which is a good thing because we can then use this brace to help locate where this needs to go on that side. So we're going to drill this. Oh man. We're going to drill this spot weld out so that the brace underneath gets separated from here. Then we can transfer that brace to that side, which doesn't have the brace anymore, it's gone. We can use those bolt holes to line it up. Down on this end, so this one is welded right on the edge here. When we cut this, we don't wanna cut it right on the edge, we wanna cut it further in. Now we've got some damage that starts about here. So we kinda only have about an inch and a half to work with. This is the die off the bottom of my plenishing hammer. I wanna cut this so that it is, when we weld it to the new one, there is room on the underside down here for my plenishing hammer die to get in there. When you weld sheet metal, when you weld anything, the heat from the weld causes the metal to shrink. And that's how you get your distortion. So by using a plenishing hammer, or if you don't have a plenishing hammer, a hammer and dolly also works, you can hammer that weld and stretch it back out and that essentially gets rid of your distortion from the heat. So we want to make sure we have enough room that the plenishing hammer will get in there. The last thing I want to consider is this corner right here is kind of munched a little bit. There is a wire edge in there, like a, a 
think they call it a hard wire or an edge wire. Anyway, there's, it's like a spring steel rod that this rolls around. When you cut through there, it's gonna get a little bit weird. It's gonna create a weak spot in there because obviously we won't be able to weld that again. So I got two options. I might just cut this one right off anyways and we'll fish the little chunk of wire out of there and see if we can hammer this out and straighten it out. If that's gonna be too much work though, this one is in really nice shape. So we might even make our new panel come down and weld across there and we'll save this part of the original fender and have our splice go right in there again, leaving room that we can get in there and hammer that back out. We will have to do a little weld on the edge. You know, I said that that doesn't work very well, but in that situation, we kind of don't have a choice, so we'll just have to make it work, which it'll be okay. So with all that said, Let's draw a line on here, a cut line. We'll go right off the edge. Probably about a three quarter inch to an inch overlap, just so we got like a little bit of wiggle room. And up here, let's just go flush with this edge right here, which is probably about a half inch further up from where this splice is. Again, just so we got a little bit of wiggle room. Let's put a little bit of radius on this. If you have your welds come to like a 90 degree point like that, that's a big area for heat to kind of get trapped into, which would, can cause more distortion. But if you radius your ends like that, there's no corner for the heat to get trapped in. And it just, it makes it nicer, nicer to work with. It's a little bit harder to cut out, but. All right, we got a little radius there, a bigger radius there. Let's drill our spot weld out first and then zing that guy out. And there we have it, perfect patch panel. So this fender we're done with now. Also, there's actually three spot welds. When I first looked at it, I thought there was three spot welds and then I flipped it over to the other side and could only see one, but there was definitely three. I'm gonna take a hammer and dolly and just kinda fix up some of this a little bit. See if we can get this straightened out a little bit before I do anything else. And then once I get that done, I think probably this doesn't overlap super great right now because of this, mostly because of this bracket. So I think I'll just break all these tacks and get this stuff right out of there and then maybe we can get that to sit over top a little bit nicer and figure out how we're gonna trim and fit it. Here's that edge wire. Let's see if we can get that out of there. I might have to grab it with some vice grips. Boom. So this edge is rolled over top of the wire. There's, there is a machine that 
you know, most body shops probably haven't had in 60 or 70 years that rolls this over for you. We're getting closer. I'm gonna start trimming this away. Remember this edge here? When we cut it out of the other fender, we cut it flush with this here. So I'm gonna start trimming this back until we can get these holes to match up again. Once that end is kind of fit, then we'll figure out what we're gonna do with this end. I did get it pretty straight. So I don't know if we'll go that way or go that way yet. We'll see, how, we'll, we'll focus on that end for now. We'll worry about this later. Trim this back enough that I can get this brace kind of bolted in place. Coming over to this side now, I think, I think what I'm gonna do is try and slice this carefully so that I don't slice through that edge wire. And then maybe I can slide the edge wire through here all the way back to there which will position this and between that and those bolts we should have this where it's supposed to be something like that we'll just carefully we want to cut through the fender but we don't want to cut through that wire inside gave it a little slice there's that wire inside there Come on. Beautiful. Okay, this is lined up pretty good. We're still, this has to come down ever so slightly. So I think I'm gonna put a tack right there to hold it. And then we'll start slicing this away. Because remember, this is sitting on top of this right now. So when we slice this away, it should drop down, which will line that back up. So we'll probably take the air saw and start just following this line along here. When we get up to here, we might just joggle over and then joggle over. And when we get it all welded in place, we'll still have to put a tiny little patch right there from where this hole was but I think we're definitely on the home stretch now. Well, I've changed my mind. I'm not gonna tack it here because we, we need that to go down. And if I tack it, it's not gonna go down. So what I've done is replaced all my vice grips with, I got three self-tapping screws holding this in place because I was worried when I start cutting it that the vice grips are gonna start moving around and stuff. So that'll keep it nice and secure. And I think we'll start at this end and just work our way down this way. I'm going to cut this with the air saw. Now the reason I'm going to cut it with the air saw rather than with a zip disc or like this guy here is because the air saw, it uses hacksaw blades. I just cut hacksaw blades up and put them in there. And it's nice and thin, which makes a really thin gap to weld up. And the thinner the gap, the less weld, which means the less heat, which means the less distortion. I'm going to use the TIG welder to weld this and the reason I'm using the TIG welder, remember earlier I was talking about how when you weld and the heat goes into the panel and it shrinks and that's what causes your distortion. So to battle that, you hammer your weld back out which stretches it back to its original position. A MIG weld, if you try to hammer and dolly a MIG weld, usually it cracks. There, a MIG weld is a really like hard, brittle weld. Whereas a TIG welder, or if you don't have a TIG welder, oxycetylene, like a torch, works well also, creates a really malleable soft weld that you can hammer out and it's not gonna crack. It's nice and soft and like the same 
malleability, if that's even a word, as the sheet metal so you can work it and hammer your panel back to where you need it and not have to worry about that. So that's why I usually always TIG weld my panels in. Um, like I said, if you don't have a TIG welder, oxyacetylene welding, like gas welding, same thing. It stays a nice, soft, malleable weld. This chop was all done gas welded. So that's not to say that you can't do this with a MIG welder. If that's all you have, knock your boots off. There it is. You can still get really good results with a MIG weld. There's plenty of people out there that do it every single day. The TIG weld or the oxyacetylene weld is just you know, a slightly better way. You get a better result. So if you have it, use it. If you don't have it, don't use it. If you don't have it, but you want to get better, you know, keep your eye out for a TIG welder. TIG welders are, they've come down so much in price in the last 10 years that you can get a nice hobby sized TIG welder for pretty cheap. So my strategy here, what I'm gonna do is, we're already flush right there. I'm gonna put the air saw in there and just cut along here carefully because remember we got a bracket on the other side. We don't wanna cut through that bracket. But I'm just gonna cut right along this edge here, which is gonna cut through the bottom panel on the same contour as our line. So they should, when this folds down, will line up nice and flush. So I'll probably go from there to, I don't know, about there or so, tack that up, go from here to here, tack that up, and just keep working my way all the way along until we have the whole panel tacked in place. All right, this is all tacked in place now. It came out really, really, really nice. I'm very happy with it. Our little lines down here are all lined up again. We've got a nice, good flow going. So I think our next step now is we're gonna weld it. So welding, like I mentioned earlier, I'll probably just do like from there to there and then I'll hammer it out and then move on and just kind of work our way down. Every time I'm done welding a section, I'm gonna hammer it out and that is gonna stretch the metal back out to reverse the shrinkage from when it gets welded. For the regular viewers of the channel, the cowl vent that we welded in, it's the same, same way I did this. And this has no body filler in it at all. That was bare metal, just with primer over top. And it's like damn near perfect. Despite what that one guy said.
that's all welded up now and hammered out. Put a little patch in where that hole was, filled up our little screw holes. So it's not perfect. It didn't turn out as good as the cowl vent did, but I'm not throwing it in the scrap pile yet. I'm going to grind it. For grinding, I'm going to start with this little stone first, and we're going to use that just to knock off the very top of the weld. Probably take it down to, I don't know, 70%. And then from there, we're going to switch out to this guy here. We'll finish it off with that. Once we get it all ground down and nice and happy, then we're going to hit it with old Smashy, the plenishing hammer. And that should, it's a little weird in here, a little weird right here. That should take care of that and get it all roughed out into shape. This is all ground down now. It's going to need some work still. First thing we need to do is figure out the radius. To do that, we're going to use this radius gauge. This has all the different radiuses that, that most car panels have. There's no such thing as a totally flat panel on a car. What do we got? There's a 12 inch radius. Further down over here, we've got six there's a six inch radius there even going this way like this panel is not flat this way when you stand back and look down the side of a car it goes like that ever so slightly so because we've got this other fender over here we can figure out our radius on there that is what do we got not quite oh we're about a 12 inch through there Actually, a lot of that's a 12 to about there, and then 24 all the way up to there. So with this number, now that we know that's a 24 inch radius, we can go over to our plenishing hammer here. This is, this is a, probably if I was to guess, 1940s era, water valette plenishing hammer. I've had this thing for like 15 years now, and man, it pounds. It's just a great little machine. So these lower dies are removable. This one here is stamped four. And what that means, if we go over to our radius gauge here, that's a four inch radius on there. So we want a 24, which to the eye almost looks flat, but it's not. If we put our 24 inch gauge on there, boom, there we go. So we're gonna throw this die in there and then run the fender through it. The cool thing with water valette plenishing hammers is they're actually handheld. This stand I just built out of like an old wide five rim and that's a 46 mercury torque tube with just a couple pieces of pipe welded to it and some hose clamps holding this on. But they are totally handheld. So you can just transfer the head off of here onto this frame or remove this frame or they actually make a larger sized frame as well that I do not have, I'm missing that. It should be sweet if I did have that because that big frame would sure be nice for plenishing the center of roofs when you chop them. But yeah, so with this, you can go right up to the fender and plenish it. That being said though, I'm probably gonna do it on the frame just because this fender is pretty it's gonna fall off the bench, I just know it is. So I'm gonna hold it and then run it through our 
replenishing hammer that's on the stand. This stand, the torque tube is actually filled with lead shot. And then I've got an old Ford flathead flywheel on the back just for a little bit of extra weight. I'm gonna lubricate this just with a little bit of, this is just a little bit of transmission fluid and some paint thinner. And that's just to get it to slide through the plunishing hammer a little bit easier. Put your earmuffs on. Old smash is noisy. So now that this is starting to come back in the shape, we can go back and start to dress our welds a little more. As this area here has now come up where it's all flush in here, so we got a little edge right there. Probably switch to 80 grit, and I'm just gonna keep knocking the welds down a little bit, and then plenishing, and then knocking the welds down, and just kinda keep going until I'm happy with it. So I actually didn't even run it through the plunishing hammer a second time. It got it pretty close that I was able to do the last little bit just by hand with the hammer and dolly. So again, it's not 100% perfect, but I think it's, it's as good as I'm going to go with it. It's good enough. Uh, what am I going to do now? I'll probably just buzz over everything real quick with the DA sander or some 80 grit. And then I think, I think our fenders are done. Just as I was about to start sanding it down, I remembered we still had that spot weld to touch up. So I welded that up and then I also flipped it over and welded the backside of this edge around the edge wire here because I forgot about that. And there was a little spot by the headlight pad that needed uh, just a little weld. So I did that. It's all buzzed down in 80 grit now. Came out pretty good. Beautiful. I'm gonna mock it up on the car now, mainly because I have nowhere to put it in the meantime, and I don't wanna go put it back outside in the trailer because it's pouring rain out right now and it's all nice and clean. Bam. What's up with that, huh? That's beautiful, I love it. I have now decided, this is the first full fendered car I've ever built, and I have now decided that full fendered hot rods, those go in the same category as the guys that chop their cars, but still have like functional vent windows and all the stainless is chopped. Like, if you've ever chopped a car, and then put all the stainless in it and major vent windows work. You know what I'm talking about. That is like next level to do that. Anybody can chop a car, but the guy that makes his vent windows work, he's the hero. Anyone, well, not anyone can build a hot rod or chop a car, but building a full fendered hot rod is like, that's a whole nother thing, man. But look at it. This is so exciting. Anyways, I'm gonna end this video here because I'm sick of working on cars for today. Thanks everybody for watching. The next video, we're probably, there's not much to do on the other fender. I'm just gonna mock it up to make sure that everything's happy and it fits good. And if that's the case, maybe we'll blow some primer on them. Maybe we'll dig into this guy first. I don't know. I'm just winging it. I'm winging this whole car. I'm just doing whatever feels fun. So anyways, thanks again for watching. If you wanna support the website, please check out lgspeedcustom.com. I really, really, really appreciate the support from you guys. So we'll see you guys on the next video.